Hello and welcome to our online service today as we uh, give thanks to God, bring our prayers to him and our worship. We're going to start by singing the modern uh, modern hymn that won a Grammy Award actually, uh, which is 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I Worship your holy name The sun comes up The sun comes up It's a new day dawn it's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, O oh my soul
Our Bible reading today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning at verse 6. It's all about generosity. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed. And will enlarge your harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way, so that you can be generous on every occasion. As through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. The service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but also is an overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourself, others will praise God by your disobedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ. And for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Let me... Say a prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word, the scriptures, the Bible. As we consider generosity and its results today, we pray that you would move our hearts. Speak to us through your inspired word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We all know that there are things that we can do that are a blessing to ourselves and a blessing to others around us but are not always easy to do. For example, take exercise in a smaller or greater way, depending on our ability and our strength. Exercise is good for us, isn't it? When lockdown was on, I started running again twice a week. And although the thought of putting on my trainers uh, uh, and my running shirt and my shorts made me feel a bit weary, as soon as I started doing it, it made me feel good except maybe for the last 400 yards, as I sprinted down uh, Vicarage Lane, which felt like I was going to die, my heart was going so fast. But you get that uh, after-exercise glow, don't you? And I got better, in fact. I got down to 33 minutes for four miles, which is not too shabby for someone of my age. I felt better in my head. I got more energy. I got fitter, too which meant I could do more with my family. It's a win-win, isn't it? A win-win, as they might say, whoever they are. But it's easier not to do it, isn't it? To find entertainment on the TV or the internet more appealing. To find some lame excuse. And one puts on weight and the negatives happen. Mind you, chocolate is really nice. And the sofa is very comfortable. What's that got to do with the passage today? Paul is encouraging the early church into generosity. And he just doesn't wag the finger, this is what you must do. He tells him about the many positives and blessings of being a generous person. The thinker Joseph Campbell once wrote, Money is congealed energy and releasing it releases life possibilities. Money experienced as a life energy is indeed a meditation and a letting it flow out instead of hoarding it is a mode of participation in the life of others. Well, St. Paul said something pretty similar 2,000 years ago. So we're just going to think briefly about five benefit, five benefits of generosity. Now, When we are generous, just get this out first in the beginning. When we are generous, we don't do it for what's in it for me. But Paul spells out, actually, 
there are benefits for other people. And actually, it comes back to us as well. Firstly, live generously and it comes back. What goes around comes around, as they say. Paul uses the image, doesn't he, of a sower and a reaper. If you put little in the ground, don't expect to bump a crop, he says. Modern farming techniques increase the yield, yes. But still, if you don't put any seed in the hopper, don't expect the harvest to produce much. And this is expanded in different ways. Verses four, uh, verses 8 and 10. He blesses us abundantly. You will have all you need if you are generous. He spells it out, doesn't he? What you have will be multiplied. You know, I found it's true in my own life as well. It's not the reason I give, but a wonderful blessing from God. I've never gone short. We've always had enough. And in a way, it's a test of faith, isn't it? Are we going to cheerfully trust God with our congealed energy, our congealed life, our finances? When we do, we never go short. It'll come back to us in another way as well. It affects our character. You get that at the end of verse 8 and also the end of verse 10. And also in uh, verse 13 as well. You will abound in every good work, he says, verse 8. God will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness, he says in verse 10. Verse 13, the obedience that follows your confession of your faith of the gospel of Christ. It's approving of our faith. A part of our right living, our living well before God, is generosity. For some it's harder than others to live that way, but as we do, we're following God's commands. On top of that, generosity leads us to taking our faith seriously, doesn't it? And changes other aspects of our lives, the choices that we make, what we spend our resources on, how we use our time. Our godliness and prayer. As we give, actually, these things develop as well. I've seen that happen many times in my life as well. I've known it was true for myself as well. Firstly, what uh, there's that blessing abundantly, both practically and spiritually, we abound. Secondly, it's a virtuous circle, verse 11. When the output of a system feeds back into the input of a system... It can have different effects. When I worked in industry and did quality control uh, computers in, on the shop floor, they could see, our, our machines could see if there was a drift in the process. It was going one way or the other. So the engineers could then feed it back into the entrance and just maybe push the system one way or the other. If it was producing too much or too little, they could just tweak it a little bit. Whether that be bags of dried milk or coming out a bit light... Or the dimensions of a penny, a penny were too big. Whatever, they could change it. It was a feedback system. And Paul says, you know, there are blessings for your generosity. That's physical and spiritual, we said that. But also, God will give to you and you'll be able to provide even more. It's a virtuous circle of thanksgiving. God gives to us so that we can give more. I've told you this before. When I got a first job and started earning properly, I felt led to tithe my income and support the work of my local church. I thought God encouraged me in that the week after that prayerful decision and I'd sorted out my standing order. The boss called me in the week after. He didn't know anything about this and gave me a 15% rise. And then I had to go and sort out my standing order again, isn't it? But it's a thing, isn't it? A virtuous circle of blessing. So it, it, it uh, and thirdly, it'll cause others to praise God. We get that in verse 12, don't we? As, as well as being an act of obedience that's good for us. Our generosity brings thanks to God. It praises God. The energy we use, the time we spend, the effort we put in causes other people to thank God. The money we put in the plate or go through the bank or whatever, it goes to our mission agencies. Or other Christian relief agencies. It means that people thank God. As a church we're always grateful what comes, comes into St. Anne's. And when we express our gratitude. We're truly aware of what people um, 
they have sacrificially given and how God moved in their hearts. It means we give thanks as well to what is given. And as you give to our church, obviously it supports the school, our mission, mission agencies, the work of the church in so many ways. The work of the church and the diocese. Thanks be goes to God. As people praise God. Verse 14, as well it goes on, that people will pray for us. Paul goes on to say this mutuality will happen. In their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you. And there's always a mutuality in the Christian faith. Maybe poorer brothers or sisters are helped by the finances that we provide, give thanks to God. And they pray for us. There is great power in prayer. And that's why we give thanks for the offering when it comes in. It's prayed for, but we also pray for each other and also pray for uh, people pray for us. I know that the diocese prays for us. The mission agencies give thanks for what they've received. I pray for you as you serve and we pray for each other. It's another wonderful benefit of generosity. And finally, remember, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. As Jesus did so often in his teachings, that what we receive, then we share, don't we? What God has given us, his character and his practical application of that, whether it be forgiveness or provision or his presence with us, himself in the Lord Jesus Christ, he's given for us that indescribable gift. He is the source of our generosity. It's God sharing himself with each and every one of us. Always let God's generosity be an inspiration to your generosity. Last week we thought about God giving us the responsibility in using what uh, he has given us in creation. The glory of God in creation, the glory of his creation, the glory of our creation has been a part of it. And also our responsibility within that. And today we've thought about generosity in that, how this is a win-win situation, isn't it? Our responsibility to be generous leads to good for us and others. What does it lead to? Briefly, righteous living. It leads to God's further provision back to us. It's a virtual circle of encouragement. It's the cause of people praising God. It will cause others to pray for us. It's a response to God's wonderful generosity in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll be sending out uh, with this email a pamphlet which just describes what's going on uh, in the work of the church and also some uh, details there uh, to encourage you to think about your own giving as well. Also there'll be a gift aid form and another form which for st setting up uh, standing orders. If you'd like and to consider giving to the work of St. Thomas, I do encourage you. But the more important thing is to live that generous life, which has so many benefits and is a part of our responsibility as people who have been given much to use it for the honour and glory of the Lord. Let me say a prayer. Lord, we thank you for the many benefits of life that you shower upon us the wonders of creation, our creation. Help us use what you have given us with generosity and have the faith to understand the very many benefits of giving. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our next song, which will come up on the sing. We praise God together.
We come to a time of prayer. Let, let us pray for God's hand to be in our world, our nation, our community, in our lives. Gracious Father, we thank you for the many gifts you have given us. We thank you for, for our world and the beauty that is in it. Forgive us, Lord, when we mar that wonderful creation by our own stupidity and selfishness, our own lack of responsibility. We pray for places in the world where there is war and conflict, where your creation is not honoured, whether that be the creation of the earth or the creation of, of humanity. Pray for a war to stop in Ukraine, that a just and lasting peace would happen there. We pray for countries where there is injustice and violence, continuing to pray for Christians who are persecuted throughout the world. There's very troubled countries where, just to name you, is a death sentence or at least persecution. Continue to pray for Christians in Afghanistan and North Korea, which are so high on the list of persecuted minorities in the world. But other countries, Lord, where there is just a lack of justice, we pray for peace. We pray for Israel and Palestine. We pray for Iran and an overthrow of the regime there. We pray for other countries where there is discord and it just rumbles on. Lord, change the hearts of the men of violence to the paths of peace and justice. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for our own nation, remembering the king, the prime minister and all in positions of authority, that they would recognise that they are under your authority, Lord God, and act accordingly. Bless our leaders with wisdom, we pray, to follow the right paths, paths of justice and mercy, paths of generosity and wisdom. Pray for our own community, for the people of, of uh, Standish Low Ground, of Shevington and Crook. Lord God, we pray your blessing would rest upon each and every one. And Lord, we pray for a movement of your Holy Spirit. In and amongst us, we pray that many again would seek you, the true and living God. We pray that our communities would be known as a place of neighbourliness, of generosity and kindness where the weak are protected, the frail are encouraged, and the strong use their strength for others. Bless our community, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for the church, remembering our bishops, Philip and Jill, that you would anoint them with your spirit at this time, that they would know the right paths to follow, and that you would be at work in, in their lives. Give them wisdom as they oversee us, we pray. Pray for the uh, Church of England as well, after the decisions made at General Synod recently. We pray, Lord God, that people would seek you first in their lives, not their own desires, but seek you, Lord God, and your ways and your paths, which you have revealed to us in your word. Give wisdom to our leaders, even in difficult uh, conditions to follow you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for those known to ourselves who go through time of sickness or injury or frailty. In the silence we lift to the Lord those known to ourselves who need his special touch at this time. Draw close to those, we pray, Lord Jesus, who are going through a time of sickness. Touch them with your presence and your healing spirit, we pray. May you be at work in their lives. Bring healing to their minds, their bodies, their spirits, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. And remember those who've lost loved ones over recent weeks. Pray that the Lord would draw close to those who mourn. And grant them his peace. 
We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray for ourselves, for a sense of generosity and understanding the benefits of having that light touch on what we own. Lord, help us remember that we are responsible to, for what you have given us. And may your name be honoured in how we use what you have given us. Bless us with real knowledge in this, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord grant you his peace this day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We join together in worship with our final hymn.